My name is Lisa Jenkins. I am the executive director of One Tennessee. We have several of our board members uh, also in the session, as well as a couple of our staff behind the scenes uh, orchestrating all of the technology to, to make this event happen today and, and for the next couple of days. Uh, One Tennessee is a relatively young organization and I learned about it probably at its inception um, coming out of a summit that was hosted by the Tennessee Department of Health, and in particular, uh, Dr. David Reagan uh, was instrumental in that, uh, pulling together folks from around the state to really think about how can we reverse what we were seeing at the time, uh, the increasing use in the pretty poor ranking that Tennessee had, very high rates of uh, prescriptions, opioid prescriptions, uh, and then also that was contributing to the, the high rate of death and overdose. Uh, One Tennessee formed uh, with a group of people who were interested uh, and went through all the stress that it took to put together a nonprofit organization and to uh, be recognized as a 501c3. Uh, so that started in 2018. And, and coming out of that summit, there were four goals um, that the various organizations uh, agreed to as priority gaps that needed to be identified. Uh, one of those was clinician education. Uh, patient education was the second one. Uh, the uh, use and, and dispensing of opioids in emergency departments and also in uh, surgical uh, context. So those four goals were uh, recognized as the, as the areas that the state needed to improve in. Well, uh, thanks to the Tennessee uh, uh, Hospital Association, which partnered with some of the other, uh, some of its members, uh, they raised their hands and agreed to tackle the work to, to improve in emergency departments and surgical settings. Uh, One Tennessee was actually asked to lead the way for clinician education. And uh, I think it started by convening the um, uh, folks in the various clinical education programs, the medical schools, the nurse, nursing schools, the colleges of pharmacy, et cetera, um, and quickly um, you know, got some agreement from those organizations to uh, add uh, into their content for the people who are currently undergoing clinical training. So that left for One Tennessee, um, the big area of working on clinical education for the physicians and prescribers in particular who are out in the field already practicing. So we have focused a lot on continuing education, working again with our partner associations like the pharmacy association, the dental association, the medical association, uh, the nursing association, we've looked for any and all ways to um, help get information out to clinicians about um, the risks, the uh, recommended best practices, some resources for them um, to, uh, to consider what is appropriate use for opioid medications within their practice. Um, we currently have three projects that we've been working on. Uh, since our formation. We're very proud of our academic detailing program, which trains clinicians um, to meet with their clinical colleagues in their practice locations, one-on-one -on -one or in small groups, kind of talk with them about what are some of the major issues for their patients and, and their providers, um, and then help them with information about what is recommended, what are best practices, what are some of the successful approaches. And even more importantly, what are some of the resources that are available to the clinicians as they're talking with their patients about um, using opioid painkillers? Um, the second project that we've been working on in partnership with Vanderbilt University is um, um, an application that provides continuing education through a mobile app, uh, which is called Quiz Time. Um, there we helped with developing curriculum for prescribers first, and we are current, we have been working on and are hoping to launch very soon uh, a curriculum for non-prescribing nurses 
um, who often are the source of patient education about the use of their medications. And then our third project is kind of in, uh, what can I say, still in developmental stages. We're working on a pilot project um, that will hopefully develop some tools for primary care practices or outpatient uh, clinics that are looking to adopt the best practices for treatment of chronic pain in particular uh, for patients that have been on opioid uh, medications for some time uh, to help them kind of look at other alternatives to the use of opioids and to continue to do that in a safe manner um, even as they develop some comorbidities, as, as they start taking medications where there may be some contraindications or where they're exposed in, in risky circumstances, maybe uh, susceptible to falls and other things. So not only are we looking to support the physician practices to adopt uh, uh, some alternative methods of treatment, connect them with the uh, interdisciplinary uh, teams of colleagues that they need to work with, um, such as counselors, uh, uh, navigators, I hear them called sometimes social workers, uh, and others, and to take advantage more of testing uh, tools that are available and, and assessment and screening tools that are available. So we have a, a wonderful team of clinicians working on that. And one of, their one of the challenges for them is they know that it has to be um, uh, affordable for the clinicians who are looking to adopt these changes in their practice. Um, there's resistance on the part of patients. Uh, there may be resistance on the part of the payers as well. Uh, and quite frankly, that's a, a, a difficult hill to climb for a clinician who has a busy schedule and a limited time to spend uh, convincing the patient that this is in their best interest. So one of the things that we hope will come out of this conference uh, is some direction on some of the unmet needs that Wynn Tennessee can do more on. As we have uh, reached out and done a lot of clinician education, we realize that uh, with the changes in the way healthcare is delivered, more and more is done virtually, remotely, electronically. <laughs> uh, we also recognize that, uh, that it's not just prescription opioids now that, that are uh, contributing to the high rate, you know, the, the increases that we're seeing in overdoses. So what is the role for our organization to do and for clinicians to do in responding to these other challenges which were not as evident a year ago? So I leave that to say, um, I do hope that you will use this time in this summit, not only to provide some uh, input to us in the direction that our organization needs to go, but also to others who may be in attendance here. And I would be very remiss if I did not mention the partnership that we have with the Tennessee Department of Health. Um, uh, we work very closely with them. They are a major funding source for our projects and our programs. Um, all of our professional associations are, are good partners to us as well. And so uh, we look for you to guide us in things that we could be doing that would be helpful to you. Uh, I'm someone who is a big believer in win-win-win situations. And I certainly think that there's more than enough work to go around and we can each find a place where we could be doing more and avoid uh, duplication of effort or competition for resources and still improve our effectiveness overall.